and um yeah uh i think he was in a, a small town in the east if uh, memory serves and he yeah was you know did did a fantastic job and um decided to stick around as a lot of people um did at that time and i guess as they do now to be honest um and here is jeff dr jeffrey taylor he's coming is he here can i hear you jeff hello hi can you hear me i can't believe it <laughs> can you hear me okay i'll tell you what jeff you if you me. don't mind uh let's let's uh um, let's let's be very resourceful um i'm gonna we have jeff's audio yeah. i'm just gonna call him on uh whatsapp and uh hopefully uh you can hear him that way is that okay jeff <laughs> thumbs up okay here we go This is the way we roll around here. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Good. Good. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Okay. More technical details. Ah, I'm 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 being told that uh, someone can actually hear you through Facebook, but maybe uh, that is just from this WhatsApp. Do you know, Kristen? Was that uh, through WhatsApp or was it uh, you know through his microphone? I mean, through the software. Okay, Jeff, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you fine. Okay, I'm going to turn you up a little bit. Unfortunately, I can hear myself. <laughs> now you can. Now, now you I can. can. Now it down, I turned it so down. I'm only hearing you through the headphones. Okay, great. Good. All right, we may have a slight delay doing it this way, but I think we can manage. Um, okay, everybody, pretend like uh, I'm just doing the show intro now. Hi, everybody. I'm Drew. Welcome to Making Waves, where we interview spectacular individuals doing amazing things in a difficult world. I'm your host, Drew Lifeite. On today's Making Waves on fakes and forgeries, art forensics, and what it means for the world of art. To clue us in, our guest today is the fabulously interesting and erudite Dr. Jeffrey Taylor, a partner at New York Art Forensics, an art forensics laboratory that specializes in the authentication and attribution of works of art. A highly respected expert in the field of art forensics, Jeff followed a wide range of cases, including the Knudler Gallery forgeries case, which was the subject of the documentary Made You Look. That's uh, on Netflix, actually. He's also been yeah. featured in numerous articles and documentaries about art forensics. Jeff has a PhD in comparative history from Central European University and has taught courses on the art market, curatorship, connoisseurship, and art forensics. For the last year, yeah. he's been a US Fulbright Scholar at the European Humanities University in Vilnius, Lithuania. And best of all, Dr. Jeffrey Taylor is someone I've known, I think, for about three decades as a uh, fellow longtime resident of Budapest, Hungary. Welcome, my old friend, Jeff Taylor, to Making Waves. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Drew. Hi, Hi Drew. Thank, Thank you for having me here on the show. Oh, it's wonderful to have to you. Here. It's wonderful to have you. Yeah. So first question, um, how are you doing, old friend? Well, all right. Well, all right. It's, uh, it's, it's a nice place, uh, it's to, a nice be place to be here in Vilnius. Um, um, it's a lovely city and, uh, and uh, great people, great here, people and here. And I really like this. I really university like this university I'm at. I'm, at. Um, I'm, here, for I'm here for the second year now, now so uh, I'm, 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 I'm here for another year. And, year and uh, European Humanities, European Humanities University, is university is really. really Great people. Great people. Uh, yeah. uh, it's it's a funny little, it's a funny little, little university. university. Um, was based in Minsk, was based Belarus, in and uh, Minsk, like Belarus, other universities and, uh, we may have heard of, it was like, expelled uh, from, from its home, home country, country mm -hmm. way back in 2004, 2004 uh, uh, because, because it was deeply associated, associated with the, with the opposition. opposition. Oh. 
Um, and, and so, so it's, it's been in Vilnius, Vilnius Lithuania. The Lithuanian government has graciously made allowed them to be based here. here. And, and uh, it, it has it been here for almost 20 years, years now. now. And most, most of the students are coming from Belarus, so now though now more and more, and more they come from also Russia, also Russia and Ukraine. And, and uh, so most of the teaching is in Russian, Russian language, language, but more and more, and more is in English. in English, and that's kind of one of the things that I I do for them. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. Um, yeah. So I had no idea um, that it uh, had or originated in Belarus. Um, and uh, so, I mean, obviously, it's a it's kind of an inauspicious time um, to spend very close to Ukraine, I, as it is in Hungary, I guess. But um, I'm just curious, what's your take on the mood there? Um, in light of the Russian invasion of Ukraine? The mood, the mood is, is um, ooh, um, it's in your face. It's, in your face. Um, um, it's, 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 really, in it's your really in your face. Um, it's um, it's uh, on, a sense, on a good sense. Uh, uh, the Lithuanian, the Lithuanian government, government and the Lithuanian people, people the city of Vilnius, are just extraordinarily supportive and committed, maybe as much as any country you'll ever find. I mean, they they know what's at stake. So they have been extraordinarily welcoming and generous to both Belarusian, Belarusian refugees, refugees really who've been really coming here decades. for almost two decades. I mean, it's it's a long it's a long process. process. There, um, were there were many waves of protests in Belarus, and each one would produce a new wave of, a new wave of political refugees who often would settle here in. Uh, uh, in Vilnius. In Vilnius. But then with, but the, then war with the war in Ukraine, in Ukraine uh, then a really, really enormous number, for a small country, for a small country three, million three million people, enormous number, enormous number of refugees, thousands, hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians um, here, came here to, to Vilnius also. And, uh, and uh, so one of the so things you, see, the things everywhere you see everywhere are... are Ukrainian flags, Ukrainian flags every on every city bus, bus in Vilnius. Vilnius, you see you Vilnius, see Vilnius heart, Ukraine. 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 It's, it's like everywhere. You so you see Ukrainian flags, flags but you also see the Belarusian, the Belarusian let's, call it opposition, let's call it opposition flag, which is a, which is a simply a white and red and white and flag. Red. And it was white and red, red, white and, red, red and white were, were kind of the colors associated with the Belarusian opposition. Yeah. So you'll see all, see the all city, over the city, many, many houses, houses, buildings displaying both flags uh, to signal their support. And, and you kind of, and you, kind of um, you also see it you also everywhere, see it everywhere in, in the city's um, employment. employment. So, so um, your, your bolt drivers, drivers, you know, that's like the Uber of this part of the world. They're they're they're, they're usually going to be of that background. Okay. So um, your your bold your, food your bold delivery, food delivery guys, guys, they're they're, they're going to be so, of that. Um, so um, being that I don't, really, I don't speak really speak Lithuanian, Lithuanian but I do. Um, I do speak. Sort I do of speak sort of intermediate level Russian. Level Russian. Mm -hmm. you, you just tend to speak to these people in Russian because you know that, you know that that's probably going to be their their language mm -hmm. that they're going to be using. Um, so, so, so it's it's sort of and it it follows a long history of Vilnius, which, which is just for such a, for such a not such a big not city. Such a big it's, city. Such a it's such a complex history, history but one, one of many, many ethnic and national and linguistic communities living, living um, um together together and, um, and um often because often because they have, they been, have expelled been expelled from other places other places mm -hmm. um so so it's so it's, it's, just it's just a long, long i mean the you know the jewish pop you know vilnius, vilnius, was, vilnius was known as like the jerusalem, the jerusalem of the north the it was mm -hmm. the capital of judaism judaism in the 19th century, the 19th century. and that in many ways, that in many ways had to do with because the, the, the ashkenazi jews were just pushed out of other countries germany and france and other parts of Central Europe, Central Europe and eventually um, 
would over would, the Middle Ages, over the Middle Ages, Ages and Renaissance and period eventually just kind of be pushed eastward and eastward until eventually most of them, most were, of them were somewhere in the vicinity, somewhere in the vicinity of, of uh, you know, um, Vilnius. Uh, and um, there's oh, there's my cat. Um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> makes a, <laughs> makes a appearance. Um, appearance. Um, so uh, so uh, it's. It's, it's not strange, it's not strange but, it but it is kind of, it is kind of profound right? um, that, that, the that the city continues to fill this role. Uh, in many ways, in I, many think ways I think Lithuanians look upon their, look upon their their role here, their role here as their, one you know, where they you know they themselves suffered, suffered enormous traumas in the 20th century and displacement and, displacement and uh, Forcing them to be forcing them to be refugees, for example, for example in in, uh, in Chicago, in Chicago um, um, you know, so, and, uh, and, I and I think they, you know, they they look upon this as like now it's it's their turn to to you know you know, be the people to support those. Mm -hmm. And I think they, I think they maybe, maybe more than anyone else, sort of, sort of because of their because of their traumas with the Soviet because Union, and because they certainly, they certainly the read the current conflicts, current conflicts and and let's say, let's say the the bad guys, the bad guys, that whether that's Putin or. or uh, Lukashenko, Lukashenko uh, the uh, dictator uh, in Belarus, or, or you know, you know kind of quite recently, they, they um, also also told China, told China to, to um, right go to go to heck, go to heck. Um, right. the, um, first country, the first country to say we are going to, we are going to recognize this trade, this office. trade office. Right, which is essentially an embassy. As being from Taiwan, right, which is essentially not as being from Taiwan. And it, it, derived, from it derived from their same, their same um, we're, not, we're, we're, not, going we're not going to count out to dictators, we're not, and we're not going to give in to the neo-Soviet neo communist tendency. Um, mm -hmm. um, and they, I think, um, so, so it's, 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 I guess, it's, I guess it's, it's profound, profound it's, it's meaningful, meaningful. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to say, exciting, I, I don't want to say exciting because that would say it's happy and we're dealing with a lot of trauma, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it is, um, it is meaningful. It is meaningful to be here, to right. be with a country and with people who you feel like, despite all of the adversity they're facing, are you would like to believe you would like to believe on the right side of history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, um, you know, hats off to you for showing up at that time. Um, I'm sure anyone in your position might have some reservations, <laughs> that, you know, um, but. Uh, Kudos to you on that. So I've heard or I've read actually that you have actually also um, taught a course or a seminar on uh, art forensics uh, sometime this summer, which would yeah. segue, yeah. I guess, into uh, yeah. our yeah. topic at hand. If, if, I, if you'll yeah. allow me, yeah. I just uh, I found this mm -hmm. definition. You can uh, tell me whether it's correct or not. It's um, says art forensics attempts to detect forgeries, deception, and stolen property, all with the intent to satisfy the owner, buyer, auction house, collector, and insurance companies. It is estimated that more than 20% of the art produced and sold is forged. So I'm curious what you think of that. Hmm. Uh, it's, pretty good definition. it's pretty good definition. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a it's a term. It's a new forensic. term. Art forensics. Um, um, forensics. Forensics. By the way, by the way just, just means producing, producing evidence, evidence for use in a court. Um, that's, why we have that's why we have different terms for different types of forensics. It's all about producing evidence, producing evidence and making, and making testimony or making testimony you know testimonies that can be viable in a legal, legal proceeding um the truth is the truth is most of what we do does not go to court it's but produced it's always produced in the, in the possibility possibility that it might and, and it, was it was a term that we, that we kind of observed was increasingly being used to describe, to describe a, a 
activity that, activity that didn't have a good name, which is what we're doing, especially with scientific analysis, and but also, uh, but also combining that with uh, the other elements that are still very necessary to develop a, uh, a, 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 a determination of, let's say, attribution. In other words, who made this artwork? And when was it made? And these questions. Uh, and there were, you know, there were, you know, a number of terms, none of them particularly satisfactory. What the original one, we might have called, one, it, might have called it conservation science. science. So, in other words, so in other words, and it was pioneer. It's, 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 it's not field. such a young um, field. Um, people have been people doing have been this doing this since. since uh, well, uh, well, the first book, the first book on chemistry, on chemistry and, the and the arts was already written in the 1820s in Italy. So when chemistry is like very new field. I mean, they don't even have a periodic table at this time. They don't really even have a clear concept of all the elements. And yet, and yet, already with, already the, new with the new technology of microscopes, uh, and a new sort and a new of sort of attempt, attempt to identify elements, elements within the wider wider chemistry, chemistry of things. Right. They begin, to, they begin to immediately understand, way back in the 1820s, almost 200 years ago, that, oh, well, this, oh, well, this, this new science, this will be useful in the problematic, in the problematic of, of art. Of art because, because, especially, especially almost, you know, well, almost especially artworks, paintings but especially paintings, are very much products, are very much products of, of their chemistry. And and so, so it was, and even, and even in the 1820s, they already, they already also understood that, that, as you mentioned in your early uh, quote, uh, there, are there are a lot of fakes forgeries. and forgeries. This was known back then also. And, and so, so the field, though, the field, though also really also began, really began in the, even in the, even in the, in the it really began to develop methodically uh, in the 20th in the 20th century, even, even, even you know about a hundred years ago, let's say uh, some, big uh, some big trials, trials particularly one we, one we call the trial, of the, the trial of the American Leonardo, which was a painting ostensibly, ostensibly by Leonardo da Vinci uh, that, uh, that was proposed proposed as, as being by the being master, by the master when, when there was another version of it also the in the Louvre. This is, uh, this is uh, uh, known as La Belle Fronnière, and 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 the trial and, and the trial went on for almost you know almost ten years. years. And ultimately, ultimately, what it proved was the new sciences that were developing. Especially around, especially chemistry, around chemistry, um, as well as, as, well as the now existent, now existent technique of X-rays, mm -hmm. we're going, we're to, provide going to provide greater certainty than the primary, than method, the primary method we've been using to identify and attribute artworks, which we use, which an, we expression use an expression called connoisseurship. connoisseurship. In other words, to, In use, other that words, to use that French word connoisseur, conne, to know, to know. And, we course, and we use it, of course, casually as like somebody, like somebody who knows wine, wine or cheese, cheese like, they are, like they are a connoisseur. But in art, but in art has a very has a specific, very specific meaning. It means somebody, it means somebody who, who is qualified, qualified to identify, to identify artworks, artworks and, and uh, make, make an attribution to, mm -hmm. to uh, who did it. And the and techniques, the techniques for, that for that had been developed in the late 19th century, 19th century around, around an idea of looking at the lesser, at the lesser observed, observed details. Because if somebody, because if somebody is copying or faking or forging, they will pay great, attention, will pay great to attention to the primary like details, the like the eyes and the mouth of the Madonna. Mm -hmm. But they'll spend but they'll less spend effort less getting, effort the, getting extraneous the extraneous details, details especially the hands, hands and ears, and ears which, are very, which are very difficult to render. And anyone who studied painting and drawing will know that these parts of the human body, of the human body can be extremely complicated to render, to render in a way that looks believable. Um, Realistic, realistic, and so artists, and so develop, artists very develop very personal techniques, techniques to do that, and that, do we, that, and that we believe that this was how the artist or the, the, artist or the copyist is going to give away their metaphorical fingerprints. Um, um, 
And that had been the way. And that had way, been the way. And it, in many, many ways, ways still kind of prevails, prevails in a lot for a lot of artists. But over the course of the last hundred years, increasingly there's been an emphasis on the scientific analysis. And it was primarily pioneered by people in a handful of museums that were large enough and wealthy enough to develop laboratories. And so we would call it conservation science. Um, mm -hmm. um, sometimes we would also call it technical art, art history. But in the last, 20, in the last years, 20 years, we've arrived, arrived at this newer term, art forensics. And it's because, and it's because not all of, not the, all of the, purpose the purpose of study is for conservation. conservation. It, is it is also for the purpose of attribution. It is for the purpose of setting legal disputes uh, and, um, other and other questions. And so, and so we've, arrived, we've at this arrived at this newer term, art forensics. Art forensics. And I guess our, our firm was kind of fortunate in the fact that we kind of claimed that term for our company. Um, about about eight eight, eight, nine years eight or nine years ago when we founded our company and uh, uh -huh. and we kind of have kept to it and so uh, so that's, uh, how, so that's how art forensics kind of became this new field new field and it is i would say more and more um important and important. that's why we, began, that's why we began, began to teach it like this, it. Like this summer we taught it here in vilnius we mm -hmm. received a grant from the baltic american, baltic american freedom foundation which brought my business partner tiago pivovarczyk over from, over new, york, from new york uh, uh here and we did a a, a, a one-week course and uh it was really it was really fantastic fantastic we most, we, most of the students were actually from the restoration restoration institute uh, uh, of in, the in in, 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 lithuania. in lithuania they've kind of consolidated, consolidated all, the all the restoration work at one at institute, one institute in, vilnius, in vilnius where all the different, all the different museums across the country all send their stuff here here and then there are the, then experts, there are the experts on paper and painting, and painting Buildings, gilding and, and, furniture, and, furniture, and furniture, furniture, and they all work in this very lovely, very lovely very institute good with very good equipment, uh, excellent um, analytical, analytical machinery, machinery as well, actually. Um, and we, and um, we um, so we were really so lucky. we were really we lucky. Had, we had really advanced, advanced conservators, conservators and people who were really studying and working in this field, and we had a great a great course. It was really very mm -hmm. successful. Mm -hmm. So that, so, so that went well. What, yeah. So, you, what kind of reception do you get from people like that in general? Are they receptive or yeah. are they yeah. le leery of things? They, they, they are. are. They are. Um, so, um, so, so I'll tell you. Most so I'll tell you. Of most of the P students, students were true conservators. Were true conservators. Like, they were like they're the ones who actually take the things that are, that are damaged, you know, damaged and degraded, and they put them put into them a, into a it's state. It's a very philosophical, it's a very philosophical question, question of nowadays. You know, conservators, conservators will it's very. It's, very it's really evolved, evolved a lot about what is the right level of conservation. Um, we used to do a lot more reconstruction, and now we take a far more limited or restrained approach and but the conservators, but the conservators who really do that who work, really do that work um, um, often don't often have, don't as, have much as much knowledge about, about the analytical science that goes now, into it. We now, also we also had a couple of their, couple of their primary, scientists primary scientists also in it, and they, in it, and they had, far deeper had a far deeper understanding of what we were, what doing, we were doing, and it was, very, you know, very, really fun to talk, really fun with, them to talk with them because they, they were very advanced and, uh, and uh, had, a lot, of had a lot of really interesting insights, insights and it was more like talking with peers. But with the conservators, they were really interested in learning more about the um the scientific side the, scientific the, side, side, the chemistry side, side uh those, those processes, processes. Uh, but we also, but talked, we also a talked a lot about what were other things other things that we, that work, we on, work on which is not which is strictly, not strictly just, just the scientific analysis, analysis. So, we so we work on we do look we do at, look at we often use, we often a, use a metaphor of the process, the process of art forensics like a, is like three -legged a, legged a three-legged stool okay, mm -hmm. okay? It and it, it needs to rest on all three legs um what is, um, the, what is the science for sure for sure but if you just look but at if you just look at the science you're you're not going to get the full you're not going to get the full picture either so so uh, we uh, also look also at, look at um, two, other, two key other key elements, elements which are which absolutely, are absolutely essential to developing a proper understanding one, of this one 
is, is what we still call, we that, still call connoisseurship. that connoisseurship. Mm -hmm. to, to, in other words, in other words okay, okay, maybe we've determined, determined scientifically that this is, that this of, is the period, of the period of the artist, artist in question, because, because usually when we approach a job, there's a, a tar, a tar, a there's a, let's say, an, um, a presumed, a presumed or a presumptive, or a presumptive artist, artist. And, we, and we um are answering questions, are answering questions is like it is it by this, artist, this or artist or is it by someone is it by else, someone or, else is it or is it not by this artist, artist. so we're often starting with that, starting with that, 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 that there's a purported, a, a purported or a presumptive artist mm -hmm. And, and we may determine, we may that, determine that scientifically it's of the period. Materials the materials are correct to that period. Um, there's, nothing there's nothing that we find that we would consider a key term, uh, a key term we're, we're looking for is anachronistic material. So we don't find any materials, neither canvas nor grounding nor pigments nor the binders of the pigments because, you know, paint is, especially we're looking at oil paintings which is the majority of what we often do we do a lot of other things but say the majority of our work is going to be with oil paintings and oil paintings are composed of two things um i mean the oil paint is the pigment which gives the color and then the binder which is oil uh, oil, uh, oil but we also do um I guess not I guess entirely not entirely all, all of our paintings our paintings are, are paintings oil paintings. We end up getting a, end lot, of getting a lot of acrylics or, or other binders, binders often, often to purporting Jackson to be Jackson Pollocks. I would say we get more Jackson, Jackson Pollock wannabes than anything else. Right. Uh, right. Vast, vastly vastly, vastly more, more than any other artist Jackson we get Jackson Pollock wannabes. Um, yeah, um, I mean at one point you say you say that, uh, or maybe it's your colleague has said that uh, there are really more phony Jackson Pollocks than the, than the actual number of his works. Is that true? Many, 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 many more. Many his more. In his yes. Case. Yes. Um, yes. Um, and, and, and so, you and know, so, you know, so with the Jackson, with the Jackson Pollocks, 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 we're often not dismissing them on the basis of their pigment. Because he, he didn't work so long ago. He worked in the late 40s and 50s, especially his, his uh, dripped or poured paintings, which are the ones that we tend to get. Um, but... but it's the binder. It's the binders. Okay, so it's what, okay, binds, so it's what because binds we because we tend to get acrylic a lot, and uh, because you can you can't drip oil paint. First of all, you just it, that's, that's not how it works. It's very mm -hmm. thick and pasty. Um, mm -hmm. but, but you can drip acrylic. acrylic but he didn't, to the best of our knowledge, he did not use acrylic. Mm -hmm. He used. Um, he used, he used these enamel paints or, that were, you know, 1950s house paints that were drippy and you could drip it. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, but, it's and, uh, but it's a very particular binder. It's not, it's, um, very, it'd be, hard it's very hard to find now, mm -hmm. which is good. Um, so, anyway, so the anyway, the point is that, point is that uh, we're, looking we're looking at binders, we're looking at pigments, but even if we, find, even that if we find that all of them are correct to the period, all of them are correct, them are correct to what we know about the artist, that doesn't make it authentic mm -hmm. um so then we have to so then we have to look at other factors too factors too and, mm -hmm. and that's where we look that's at where we look at the connoisseurship even though even though we would we would we're, we're skeptical we're, we're of skeptical idea of, of the idea of connoisseurship alone, alone. Mm -hmm. as the means by as the means by which art is identified because, because we, are we are fully aware of how often, often wrong wrong in the past, in the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have I mean, been. The, I mean, just the, the, the art world, world is just littered, is just littered with, with cautionary cautionary tales, tales mm -hmm. of experts who believed in their own eye and their mm -hmm. ability to recognize the hand of the artist, and mm -hmm. they were they were wrong and wrong, they and could be, they could be fooled. Um, right, um, right. So so. Yeah. So yeah. That's, so that's that's where that's we where look we do look at it. We can't look at it alone, look at it alone we but we do look at it because after all, all even if it is of the period, it really doesn't look like the artist. Or and there's just a lot of cases where, especially when you're dealing with an artist of you know worthy, you know worthy of somebody hoping that this is by them. 
they often, they do, often work do work at a very high quality, quality and level of technical and ability. ability. And then you look at the painting you've been presented and you're like, that's not, that's, that's not really like their level or style or we don't see anything in their known works that would yeah that yeah would, that would you know present, present that, that would make that a viable version mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and then the last and then the last we, part we look go ahead please i was just gonna say do uh, most often is it the buyer or seller that's approaching you and and you know wants help um showing that it's authentic most, or inauthentic most often or, it's buyer buyer or or um potential buyer, potential buyer. Mm -hmm. The smart um, ones are the, the, smart ones are the potential buyers. They haven't bought it yet. They're just checking it out. Right. So, um, so um, yeah. So, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, buyers yeah, are potential buyers. Are buyers. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. So you were you you were. I'm sorry. You you were. Uh, you're oh, actually oh, uh, very sir. well. Yeah. You're very well documented uh, on a on a yeah. on a Jackson, yeah. Jackson Pollock painting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you and yeah. In, in Tiago, and um, uh, it's it, it's quite interesting, and I'm I'm just curious, how did you run across that specific painting, for example? <laughs> well, well, that was a client. Was a client. Mm -hmm. um, um, we kind of we kind of got got onto the trail, onto of, the trail of this forger. Um, um, originally, because of originally because of one client who had. Who had um, 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 uh, uh, we, we always have to be careful. We don't want to say a lot. We have like very strict rules on confidentiality, but uh, we can say there was a client who bought a painting and uh, a piece and was concerned, um, which led us to that uh, research. And over time, we encountered a number of other works. Works. Coming from the coming same from the same forger, we forger, we believe, mm -hmm. who was um, quite, was quite prolific, prolific. Mm -hmm. and uh, and this forger, and this forger also, also. This is what I was this is what I was going to mention about our research, about our research because. Uh, uh, well, well, uh, Tiago, uh, Tiago is going to primarily be doing the chemical analysis and, and the scientific research right. because his background is a criminal forensics. Criminal forensics um, um, right. Uh, scientist. Uh, scientist. Uh, I'm going to be I'm usually, gonna be researching, usually researching, uh, especially, uh, especially to, give to give you another French word. Um, provenance. 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 Provenance is, is the kind of the history of an, of an artwork where it's been, how it's been, how it's been you know, its, its sales, its trades, who owned it, it was where located, it was located, what has been, what has been done with it, it um, how it was displayed, displayed or used, just kind of everything, just kind of everything we know about the history of the artwork from the point, from of, the point of its being made to the present to day. The, present the, more day. the more we know, the better. Um, mm -hmm. and um, and in general, this in was general, always, this was important always part an important part in authenticating an artwork, even before they had, even scientific, before they had scientific techniques, because uh, uh, the more you could, the show more you could show a continuous state of ownership. State of ownership uh, uh, the more you could, the more you could um, assure, assure a buyer, a buyer uh, an auction house that you had an authentic work. Mm -hmm. um, so, so provenance, so provenance is, is also that's, that, that's what I would that's say, the, I would say the third uh, leg, uh, of leg of that three-legged stool mm -hmm. metaphor mm -hmm. uh, that we're using um, is the provenance. And so we're, and always, so we're researching always researching provenance. provenance. Where did this come, from? Did this come did from? How did it get there? Is there a believable is there a pathway? From the hand, from of, the hand of, the of the artist who is purported to be the artist to the present to day the present and day and the present owner, mm -hmm. um, and, and we're so looking we're looking at that. In the case of, the case the, of you, may be, you, you may be referring to that video that we did for Wired, where we we did this purported Jackson, purported Jackson Pollock, and. Uh, and uh, 
one of the things one of the we, things we that we really find, we really find uh, is uh, that we find that we find fake, fake provenance, provenance as common as, as common as we find fake painting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the future, was there a fax the involved? Uh, was there a fax involved yeah, in this case? Fax. Yeah, there was a fax. <laughs> that was the <laughs> fax I was trying to show in the video. Incredible it was an incredible fax. fax. I didn't, I didn't, in, in, the, in, the, in the wired video, I didn't even have, I didn't an, even opportunity have an opportunity to explain everything, everything that was funny right. about it. Right. Um, but it was, it was, it was, it was a masterpiece, but it was also, if you do your research, it was very easily... Dissectable, dissectable, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. in that way, um, yeah, you know, in the sense uh, that uh, you could, you uh, could, you could, um, you know, I, I mean, you know, I, I mean, so many, so many things are wrong, and, and you know, sure. and, and, you know I, it may have been written a long time, time before the internet because, mm -hmm. because they would say things like Jackson Pollock died in 1955 when just you just have to look at Wikipedia and, and you know he didn't die in 1955, he died in 56. He did have a girlfriend at the end of his life for the last few months. She is often used as the source of a um of, of suspicious paintings, uh, not, uh, just, not her just ours, but others. She herself, she herself to, towards the end of her life, the end of her life to, tried to uh, promote a work, promote that, a work she that she said, she said had, that she'd had from Jackson, from Jackson Pollock, from, Pollock from that last, last from those last days of his life. Um, 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 that she was that always, she was always trying to promote as like the last Jackson and Pollock and the the market was never the market buying. was never buying it, right. or so, the, yeah. let's say the, the authorities, the authorities mm -hmm. were never buying mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, but she was always but she was always promoting. Um, and, um, right. and, and that's, you know, and that's that's, that's, a, that's a common feature of forgery. Is, is her, name is, is her name was Ruth Kling. Uh, though, uh, though they give her a different, give her a different on name on the facts, facts which is also they funny. So they don't give her name right. They don't get her age right. They don't get her address right. And it's also just it also it also related to another key question. Which was, which was at the heart of um, the people who had the people who had bought the forgeries from this. We think the forger. Um, um, which is which is how many of these did you have that you are selling? Because you claim to have a lot of these Jackson Pollocks that all came from this young woman, former girlfriend of his at the end of his life, and. You have a lot. You of have a lot of them, and, and the, the number growing. keeps growing. And, and how many do you have? Do you have? Because, because at some point, at some you, point know, you know, the number of works works coming out of, coming this, out of this one source, source this, former this former girlfriend of, girlfriend of Pollux, just becomes just becomes not very not believable, very believable in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, so so you know those, you know, those things. things that's but that's something you're seeing a lot with, lot with um, other, other important artists, artists mm -hmm. who are worth, are worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, it is invariably, uh, invariably the forgeries that are coming out, that are coming out usually, usually run through, run through a, a, a poorly documented, poorly documented and, and um, um, Let's say often. Let's say often chaotic period in their career, in their career where, where it could be, could be believable that I mean, unless, unless until you, unless, you, until you dig deeper, and then the more, the more you dig, then you're like, mm, it's not so believable. But like, there, but was, like, a there was a recent scandal in. in um, Orlando. Orlando. At the, mm -hmm. museum, at the Orlando museum, museum, Orlando Museum of Art. They, they had a big exhibition of works works found by 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 Basquiat. By Basquiat. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Basquiat, uh, Basquiat, you know, you know he. Uh, Early, 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 in career, early in his he career, he was, you know, the street guy artist guy, and then he discovered Andy, Andy Warhol played a role in his discovery, and, and then in the early 80s, kind of he was kind of this emerging star, emerging star of, of the art world, and he was out in L.A. to do a show at Larry Gagosian's Larry Gagosian gallery, gallery before Larry Gagosian was the big mega dealer that he was, he would become, um, 
And supposedly, and while, supposedly he there, while he was there, he did, he did all these maybe works, maybe 20, 20 works or something. I don't remember how many exactly, but he did about 20 works. 20 and, works um, and, um, and, um, and, um, and, and he, he either gave them, either gave or, them, sold them or sold them to them this, to this um, TV producer, TV producer, producer who he was friends with at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and so these, were these were presumably found in that guy's, in that guy's storage, storage locker, locker, which, which first of all, first of all, why he never why would have mentioned, mentioned, mentioned he had these works when they would be worth really like, really like, you know, a lot of money, lot of money tens of millions, millions of dollars, dollars mm -hmm. if not more now. And he wouldn't mention that. Um, it seemed odd, but also, um, but they were but they were shown at the Orlando, the Orlando Museum, Museum of Art, and, and it was a, a uh, immediate, immediate, immediate. And one of the things about Basquiat, Basquiat is, is that uh, at this moment, um, there's no reigning, there's no reigning expert, expert on Basquiat. On Basquiat. Um, many, um, many important important artists, especially of the 20th century, 20th century like Picasso, you know, like Picasso Matisse. Matisse uh, uh, they have they have they have an authentication, they have an authentication committee, committee or, or what we call to use an art world term, term uh, uh what we call like catalog what we call like catalog raison catalog raison is a complete compendium, compendium of everything the artist did mm -hmm. and if it's in the catalog raison by them, by them and if it's it, not in it not by them. not by them mm -hmm. and, and, but, the market, and the market you know the, you know, the christie's and sotheby's, and sotheby's auction, auction houses, houses they like that they like that mm -hmm. they like sure. certain they, they, they want to know like is this in the book in the book or not in the book okay so like so like the castle matisse um these guys have a These guys have a catalog raisonné. They, 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 they have a committee that will authenticate. Run it's run family, by the family, by the heirs of the family, and and that works. Great and that for works great them. for the market. That, that gives them one hundred percent certainty, a monopoly authority. The problem the is, problem that, is Basquiat's that Basquiat's committee dissolved, committee dissolved oh, well, oh, over well over 10 years ago, years ago in, the in the face of the fact, face of the fact, fact that they were getting lawsuits from disgruntled collectors who believed that they did have a piece and the committee had rejected it. And so um, the committee disbanded. And so for, and so for over, a over a decade now, there's really like been no like no sheriff in town. Mm -hmm. There's just no one. And and so and, and so Orlando when this Orlando thing, thing happened, um, it kind of, it kind of brought to the fore, the, to the, fact, fore the fact that there there's no real authority right, right now yeah, on Basquiat, which the museum, which the museum seemed to be seemed kind to be of kind of exploiting that. exploiting that. that. Black, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, when nonetheless, the work when the came works came forward, um, I think the art world, I think the art world came down on them pretty hard, pretty fast, and the FBI got involved really quickly, and it got ugly for the museum, and really, you know, really quite quickly, the whole, the whole claims, claims of the collection coming from the storage locker kind of unraveled and. Uh, and as a result, and as a result um, um, you, know, the museum, you know, the museum is, uh, uh, you know, suffered a lot. Its board resigned and the director was dismissed, so, you know, but so, it is one, but of, these it is one of these cases where you, where you will see museums trying to leverage, trying to leverage their authority. Their authority to to canonize, canonize or, or anoint artworks, artworks especially especially when, when there's not, there's not a, clear a clear authority, authority. Mm -hmm. and and it's one of those things, of those when, those things when i try to explain to people this is kind of things, things we talk course. about in our course um, um you know sometimes you know my sometimes my students that, assume like, that like there's some some united nations, united nations high, high commission for <laughs> accuracy <laughs> in the art world and no, there no, ain't, there ain't there nothing, there. Like, nothing it, like it not remotely, remotely at all, at all. Mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. at a mm -hmm. national mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. or international mm -hmm. level um and the truth and is, the truth given, is how given how much money is in the art market it is really it is really shocking how little authority there is uh even like you said, know, like I said, you know, said, the, you know artists, the, the big artists like Picasso, Matisse, but a lot of other, a lot artists, of other artists who are worth a ton of money, 
Do not. Do not. Like, like yeah. Amedio uh, Modigliani. Modigliani. Mm -hmm. Not really, not really an authoritative, an authoritative expert, right expert right now. And, right. and certainly for artists, artists who died longer died ago, longer ago uh, uh, there is no, there is no clear authority. For example, Leonardo da Vinci. Um, so when... So when a presumed, a presumed Leonardo, Leonardo was brought to was market, brought to market about, about, about you there, Jeff? Sorry, folks, we've lost sorry. Jeff. I just this is just a reminder. Uh, that, sorry, uh, it's okay. Yeah. I'm, let me just uh, I'm let me, back. I'm back. Okay, okay. Let me just say that uh, it's a reminder that everybody that. Uh, you're watching Making Waves. My name is Drew yeah. Lifeite. Yeah. And we're talking yeah. today to art forensics expert, Jeff Taylor. Yeah. Um, we have yeah. a couple yeah. of uh, comments here in the chat. Let me just uh, uh, read out, read off a couple of quick things, Jeff, and then we'll, we'll uh, come, come right back. Sure. Or you can uh, react to them if you'd like. Some uh, John Paul Augustine says, somebody or something is doing the work. Computers and printers with specially made paints made to look old and indeed have all the properties of old paints and old canvases can be very convincing. Yeah. Yeah. That's from John Paul Augustine, but I'm also going to read a quick comment from a common buddy of ours, Phil Lewis. Uh -huh. Phil writes, uh -huh. uh, can one still fool you even with the modern techniques to the point of saying, I really just don't know. Hmm. Mm. Thanks, Phil. Uh, Thanks, Phil. Uh, <laughs> kind of similar, uh, kind of similar question. Um, um, I'd right. like to say, I'd like to no. say no. I um, feel like, I feel like almost every job we've, we've ever done, uh, uh, we have been able to, been able to have, a have a pretty clear idea of where we stand on the validity, validity or invalidity of the, of the artwork. And, um, but, um, that's impressive. But, um, but th yeah, but, let's say, yeah, but, let's say, know, but um, you know, um, I would say, I would say, uh, uh, almost invariably, almost invariably, I think we come up with techniques that, that, um, that um, I mean, that we can, mean, that we can identify. Usually, usually there's, there's something that's going to trip up the forger, the forger. and, uh, and uh, the something that's going to trip them up. Right. Um, but. But I would but say I would that, say um, that um, um, it's 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 uh, uh, not not that you know uh, you know I'm trying to think of, a case, trying to think of a case where we really couldn't make really make a determination. Um, you know, you know, a lot of times, lot of times we can find that. Um, Sometimes you're gonna Sometimes find, you're that, gonna find uh, that uh, it's. I can think of, uh, one, can think of one case where uh, uh, we were definitely, we were definitely dealing, dealing with a very old painting. Uh, let's, uh, say, uh, let's say a Renaissance. Definitely appeared, definitely to, be appeared to be a Renaissance period, period painting, painting, like five hundred years old, and, uh, and uh, it was. Um, we could not. We could tell, not tell. Um, I mean, I mean, with the Renaissance, with the paintings, Renaissance they're paintings, they're usually not signed. signed. This was not signed. Um, we, we, had identified we had identified who we believed the artist to be, mm -hmm. but it also could be a copy because, a copy it, was because it was common in the Renaissance times that a famous artist would do a painting and then their studio would copy it and they would make multiple versions of it. Um, so, yeah, totally could, could happen. Um, what kinds of pushback uh, have you uh, endured, Jeff, when you make a determination, say, one way or another? We get people. We get people sometimes who are angry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say more often than not, we don't have the good news. That um, <laughs> it's hard to say, but, but you know, a number, a number of times, times, you know, people have these sort of aspirations, these sort of ideals of what they, they believe they have, and it's and not. It's not um, it's not what they wish. It's not it what they wish it were, um, and we don't give them the answer that they were hoping for. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, they just, of the time they just sort of accept it and realize that they just don't have what they wish they had. Um, um, 
Sometimes they're angry. Sometimes they're angry. Um, couple times a couple they, times they mm, you know, might threat to sue us, to sue us or something like mm, that. They, they, they never usually, they never do, usually because do because we're pretty, we're pretty ironclad, ironclad in our contracts mm, and mm, other reports. And mm, so mm, we're, mm, we're mm, usually mm, safe. safe. We're safe in that regard. Yeah, but it, it, be angry they can be angry and they can, you know, but it's not that often. Usually just disappointment. So, you know, that's. I guess one of the things that yeah we we more often get. Mm -hmm. um, Who are some of the other you know most falsified artists besides Jackson? Besides Pollock, Jackson Pollock, um, um, other artists, other artists from his from period, his period so the so-called so let's say New York School. Um, New York School. New York School. Um, um, what we would call what abstract, we would call abstract expressionism, expressionism the, the period of the abstract, the abstract artists of the 1940s and 50s in New York. Um, so Rothko, Mark Rothko, uh, Willem de Kooning, uh, 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 so those 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 artists from that that period as as well. Um, just because. Well, at least, well, my, at least my own kind of aesthetic judgment is when you, when have, you a have a style that people could often people say, could well, often say, well, well, well any kid, you know, any kid can like do that. something like that, that. Yeah. and you know, um, yeah, yeah, you know, um, maybe, not kid, maybe not a kid, but there's a lot of people who can do especially something, where especially where it's not it's not a kind of hyper realistic, realistic fine, fine academic, academic technique it's far more of an expressive abstract technique technique yeah, then you yeah you can have a case where um it, you don't have you don't as have say, as i would say you don't have hands and ears to like say like does that look right you know it's not it's not even showing people so it's mm -hmm. uh let alone, let alone isn't showing anything so um you um, mentioned Rothko. Um, didn't a, a work by Rothko have something to do uh, with the uh, the closing of uh, New York's yeah. oldest yeah. gallery? Uh, that's uh, yeah, it that's in the Netflix it was, it was, uh, series, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, yeah. It's, um, Could you talk yeah. about that? Yeah, yeah. 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 It was a, a funny story. Uh, um, no, so no, the Nodler yeah. Gallery. Um, probably, at probably least, at least, possibly, possibly more, more, but at least 40, if not many more, uh, works, works were sold. Uh, they, claimed uh, they claimed to all be from this uh, dealer, dealer, this woman, La Fira Rosales, uh, who was initially based out on Long Island and claimed that she had a Collector, a collector, a Mr. X Jr., a son of a famous collector who had bought, bought all these works back in the day, in the 50s, when he bought them from the artists directly, or and 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 and, and had this great collection of abstract expressionism. Um, and it included, and it included all, all the major big names: major big Robert, names, Motherwell, Robert Motherwell, uh, Jackson Pollock, uh, Pollock um, and and Mark and, and, Mark Roth. and, uh, and uh, there was a trial. There was a trial. In fact, um, in fact, the only, um, the only trial, trial, that really trial that really happened out of all, out of of all work, of these works, the only civil trial that ever happened, happened was um, about one about Mark, one Mark Rothko, um, which, um, had which had been sold to um, this guy DeSolas, this guy DeSolas he was, uh, who was the he was the chairman, he was the chairman of Sotheby's Corporation, and he was really mad, and he felt like, who are you to be, you know, selling me fakes? I'm, you know, the Mr. Sotheby's here, and so he was really, he was mad. really mad about it, right. um, well, and so he brought the lawsuit, the lawsuit. Um, and it was about, and it was about this one Rothko, and, you know and if you know what a Rothko painting generally looks like, this one does. It's usually like two blocks of color, like a big one and then a small one over a, another layer of colors. Very, very commonly um, like that. Um, this one looked like that. Um, now, what we also um, know is later we know, later we know that um, the Nodler Gap Gallery purchased it from Mrs. Rose, uh, Rose, uh, Rosales for $800,000, which is a relatively, a relatively really, a low, really price, a low for price for a Rothko. Mm -hmm. That was and quite cheap, and they sold it for eight million dollars. Oh, no, so, in other words, they made a thousand percent markup. Mm. 
which is very which suspicious. is very suspicious mm -hmm. um, and anyone in, and the, art anyone in the art business know. should yeah. know that what we call, the, what we call the secondary art market i mean in other words where you're um uh the secondary art the secondary art market where you're um where you're um, where you're um buying up buying up something from someone else, from and, someone then else and then you're going to resell it okay we call that secondary art market as opposed to primary primary art market which means you know you're selling new things like an artist just made this painting and they give it to you to sell that's primary market or we call it contemporary secondary market is where you're buying up things and then you know reselling them um and uh um um Everybody knows. Everybody that, knows. You know, that, that, you know and I remember this back when I, my days in Budapest, where I began working in the art market. You know, long ago was once in a while. Once in a while, like, like once every four or five years, years, years you just really spot something, and they don't know what it is. The seller doesn't know what it is, but you know what it is, and you know what it can be sold for, and you buy it up, and you can mark it up a thousand percent, and you make a killing on it. Mm -hmm. Once, once in a while, in a while. Right. Right. but Nodler was getting this kind of action Nodler from Rosales, like on every painting, on every painting. Like, like they were marking five, things up five, eight, ten percent, ten, ten, ten times. Mm -hmm. You know, like a thousand percent markup. If you're getting, right. that, if you're kind getting that kind of markup all the time, you gotta, you be gotta be suspicious. Mm -hmm. You, should, you, the market, like, isn't, the market that isn't that dumb anymore especially with an internet now um it's just not um so uh you know it's just not the market's not that dumb anymore so you just can't really expect to get those kind of deals anymore um and that's and that's i think at the heart of the rothko case was did nobler really get too good of a deal that they should have known that this is suspicious um and i would and, and I would say that that was, that was at the heart of it. Also, there was a funny incident in the court where, where, they, began to where they began to debate whether the Rothko was upside down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is a Which it's an is old, old meme in, in the modern art business. Art business. There's mm -hmm. many examples sort of examples of mm -hmm. this where paintings were, paintings were hung modern, upside modern modernist, modernist paintings were hung upside down because, because so they were so modern and abstract. And abstract it could happen. Um, sure. And, uh, and uh, um, so, it like so it was like this trope, uh, but, the uh, but the reality was. was um, that uh that uh was it was um kind of also just kind of because funny because you're debating, you're debating about, about whether a fake painting is upside down and it's, they were debating and they were debating you know rothko would usually put the big block on top and the smaller block on bottom and it was just, it was just hilarious i was like I was laughing. So I was laughing so loud the judge glared at me um, <laughs> because it was um, so funny. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, but it was, but it was you know, also you know, kind of a comedy because um, because they're debating about whether a painting that's not by Rothko is hung right side up or upside down. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. kind of funny that way. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it sounds as if this gallery really. Uh, you know, capitalized on its prestige and uh, tradition, yeah. and things like this, to be yeah. able to, yeah. you know, market um, at that yeah. crazy yeah. Uh, yeah. markup. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, how yeah. indicative or how, you know, how typical do you find this uh, within the entire industry? Um, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of money flowing when you're talking about places like Sotheby's and things like that. Um, is it is okay it, uh, okay i think it's, I think it's, it's pretty, it's pretty so, common um, so no, um, I, no i don't want to say i don't want to say the big auction houses have a huge, have a huge number, number of forgeries so though they have, they have, have certainly been caught up in you know issues, issues and, constantly and, um, um most recently both christie's and sotheby's were involved in the selling of this leonardo da vinci or not leonardo da vinci painting that we call salvador mundi which is this picture of jesus holding up Glass orb, um, which was claimed, which was claimed to be the last, you know, um, um, Leonardo. Leonardo, um, um, and um, and um, it was um, it was um, and and that's and, and that's not necessarily a case of a forgery. That's a case of 
misattribution, misattribution or just this really, this really delicate question, question like, like is this by Leonardo is this by school of followers of Leonardo mm -hmm. um, is it, or is it regardless is it, is it mostly done by a contemporary restorer because there's very little of the original painting actually there anyway mm -hmm. um you know you know, the auction the houses, houses they, try really, they try really hard. I will say that they do try really hard to avoid the forgeries. Um, but um, other places, other places, much less so. So, I mean, when I used to go out to Etchery Market, which is a sort of you know the flea market in Budapest, which I knew very well. Um, I would tell my I would tell my clients, clients or if I take students, I'd be like, "Look, guys, about half of everything you see here is not authentic in some sense of the word." And it can be a lot, and of, different be a lot of different ways because paintings, can, paintings be can be fake in the way that you know, or forgeries to mean that you know there's an intention to deceive. So, in other words, it looks like the painter and there's a signature by the painter, but it's not by the painter. That's a forgery. They're also fake. They're also fakes where it just looks like a painter a certain painter but it's not signed so it's not necessarily a malicious attempt to deceive it just isn't by the painter you wish it would and then right it's in the style of and, and if it's not signed there's not uh, as we would say there's not an intention to deceive there that's why we just call that a fake or just a misattribution if you thought it was um, and then you have all the other types of art or applied arts and they have all all the same issues but they're a little bit different whether it's furniture like the furniture i used to you know deal a lot of antique furniture in budapest and um um they were they were um you know furniture you know furniture is on rarely signed there's some signed pieces but it's quite rare um, most furniture is not signed, is not signed. Um, but, but it's fake, it's fake in, the in the sense that it looks like it looks it's like it's from the 1820s, but it's really from the 1920s. So it's not 200 years old; it's just a hundred years old. Now, is that, now, fake? Is that fake? Not really. Not really. It's, just, it's just it's a later period. it's a later period because furniture would be revived, and they would make it in the style of the 1820s, but they made it in the 1920s. Um, and, you know um, and you know from the techniques, the way it was built and constructed, um, that, um, you know, it's just, um, you know, that that was, you know, the case. Um, so, um, uh, uh, you know, that's a way of, um, you know, that, you know, that, that's, 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 that's an example where, you know, when you, know, you, go, when you go out to etchery and, and you look at all this stuff, it, it, it may like look an like an antique piece, but it may not, but be, it may not as be as old or nearly as old as you think it is. Mm -hmm. um, now, is that a fake? Is it inauthentic? That's why, you know, that's why, have, you know I have like, like, I think there's like there's 20 different ways a thing can be inauthentic. Um, and and a forged, a forged painting, painting where, where like, like they, they made it look like a famous artist, artist but it's not um that's only that's one only example, example of many examples, many examples of how things can be fake mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. or, or less less, less, than, less than authentic, authentic let's, say. let's say less than authentic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. jeff it may be old hat for you but you made a an impressive uh, showing on the uh, long-standing news show 60 Minutes in the United States about an amazing German painter who was able to pull off uh, copying a number of famous painters. And, and as I understand, he got away with it for, for quite a long time. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. he was... Um... He was possibly... Um, I would say... I would say um... I would say I think I got onto the show because um, I made a presentation about him, um, mm -hmm. uh, 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 where, where um, I described him as I the ultimate as like the evil ultimate genius life. in forgeries, mm -hmm. um, and uh, he was and, uh, um, he was. He was, he was able to, um, able to um, he particularly he identified a period of German art, we call German Expressionism, um, and um, uh, yeah, so, um, so um, yeah, yeah, he, he um, really, really, he, knew, he, knew, he especially understood, understood the faking of provenance. 
that's mm-hmm. where I that's described where I him as evil genius because he understood, genius, genius, because he understood that, that you can make a very good forgery, but you're probably not going to get anywhere unless you had a unless you had a provenance to show why you had it, or how your family has it. He did that. He did that incredibly successful, better than anyone else. Created he created fake provenance, unbelievable fake provenance. Really, really made that you know. That so that, he so he Beltraki was, was possibly and like I think I and I think I called him an evil genius on the show and, and, apparently, and apparently you know now that he's been caught released, released he spent time in prison he got out now he, now has, he, a business, he has a business this often is the case with forgers they make a business, they make a business authentic making forgeries. authentic forgeries. In their style, in their style, um, mm-hmm. um, and he would do that. And he, in his and brochure, he quotes me, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Taylor, Taylor, saying, "Evil genius <laughs> on sixty minutes." Uh, so that's brilliant. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah, well, so, he, yeah no, but he he was, he was, he was I would say, really, really reflected the future of twenty first century art forgery, which is um, it's um, going to be about as much about making a convincing. Uh, forgery as it, mm. as it is about making a convincing provenance mm-hmm. and the two of them go together mm-hmm. kind of reminds me of gucci handbags and uh counterfeiters yes they do yes yeah. they do yeah it's, 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 i mean it's a very similar world i mean a little bit different but basically mm-hmm. the counterfeit, counterfeit luxury, luxury business and the counterfeit, counterfeit painting are, business are have a lot of similarities. have a lot of similarities right um, once again, I'd just like to say you're watching Making Waves, and our guest today is Dr. Jeffrey Taylor. He's an expert in art forensics, and he's been telling us all about it and uh, all kinds of interesting cases. Jeff, um, you know, what I was wondering is, um, I, I was going to ask you this at the beginning, and I, I decided, um, you know, maybe could you talk a little bit about your beginnings in Europe and how one thing led to another and how you find yourself um, today uh, yeah. as a, an art forensics expert. Can sure, you give us a, sure, things in a nutshell? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so um, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I, started um, I, I started in the art business a long time ago, um, back, long time ago back when I was living in Budapest. Um, as I think you, as were, I think you were, were. I think we were time. there at the um, same time. Um, and and uh, uh, honestly, I began honestly, an I began in antique furniture, furniture. Um, and, it uh, and it was because when I came, when to, I Hungary, came to Hungary yeah. long ago, uh, I really fell, uh, in, love I really fell in love architects. with the architecture, you know, you know what we would in call, English, we call, in English, we would call you know, Art Nouveau, or in, Hungary, or in Hungary, they would call it Secession, Secession, um, style, architecture of the early 20th century. And I really loved that style, and I really became obsessed with kind of that whole period of the late Habsburg Empire and the architecture design and everything. culture and everything at that time. Now, of course, I couldn't, now, course, I couldn't afford to buy a whole Art Nouveau building. building. But I could afford. But I could afford to buy the antique furniture, which was, if you know furniture, furniture is usually just like the architecture of its period in miniature. So I began to collect antique furniture, and that was how I got into the antique furniture business. And then realized that no one was doing transportation in Budapest, though there was a lot of great antique furniture, porcelain paintings, uh, glass, you know, just all kinds of chandeliers, all kinds of great stuff that especially, that back, especially at back at that time when antiques were, were a lot more valuable today, than they are today um because the, um, the antique really market really kind of crashed about 15 years ago and it's hmm. never really recovered mm-hmm. but but at that time antique at that time furniture antique furniture was, valuable, was really quite valuable and, uh, and uh it was um, People really, um, people really it, wanted it, but nobody could transport it out of Hungary. You needed uh, to, know uh, to know how to, you know, you need to be able to pick it up, it, warehouse it, package it, package it, it insure it, transport it, transport it either by it air, either by air or, or container, depending, container, depending on what they needed. And most importantly, and most importantly you needed to be able to arrange for cultural heritage export it's, permits, which everybody thought was, everybody they, thought weren't was impossible. they weren't impossible, but you had to do the paperwork. Most things were not protected and restricted 
did, did but you did have to properly export, export them. And we just sort of, and we just sort of understood, we learned, understood. We learned how to do it. it. And I could speak Hungarian, and so it was um, something I was able to do. So that kind of led me to be involved in the antique business. And then, of course, and then of course, I kind of migrated to everything else: paintings and for and you know, especially porcelain, which there was a lot of in Hungary. Um, two major porcelain companies, Jolnai and Hedend, both quite valuable. Um, so I began, so a, service I began a service really to ship antiques, really to ship antiques but increasingly my clientele also wanted somebody who was an expert, who could guide, who could them, guide them, them, take them around, show them what, what was what, and increasingly, and increasingly they wanted somebody to help guide them to, them to avoid fix. And, and, and so then I really began to see how much... How much Thinkery there, thinkery was, there was in every, in every kind of everything and at every price level that you know ten dollar fake the hundred dollar and the thousand dollar and the ten thousand dollar fake and there's not a lot in Hungary that was worth more than ten thousand um, dollars a few painters but not much. but yeah there were there were a lot of there was at every level every price point and every medium and type of thing there was this issue but they were each cases different intellectual problems and different questions of the authority and so, and so I kind of developed this methodology and then when I was at, when I was at Central European University PhD, doing my PhD um, cultural history, cultural history um, I happened to write. I happened to write a paper about this problem of knowledge in art and its corruption, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I kept using and recycling that paper and redoing it. And I presented it presented it at a conference where the sixty minutes people saw me, and then they asked me to be on their show about Beltraki, and I've been still presenting that essentially same paper now. Um, my, business my business partner and I have presented it in various levels and lengths, so much so, so, much so like that it's like the foundation of our entire art forensics course is this basic problem of knowledge, knowledge in art and its corruption. Um, in, other words, in other words, knowing how the art world agrees to know what it knows, which is extremely complex, ad hoc, improvised, chaotic, unstructured, unregulated, and um, it is essentially a new case for every artist and medium you can mention. There is no consistency to it whatsoever. And, you know, that's something I kind of lecture about. Right, right. Yeah, I think for many of us out there, um, that's a very valuable insight because I think, you know, people kind of do think that there's yeah, like a United Nations or some some kind of body who <laughs> overseer yeah. who decides, yeah. you know, what is legit and what's not. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, there isn't. Yeah, there yeah. isn't. Yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be nice. I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I guess that's what makes the art world kind of exciting, kind of exciting but also dangerous. You know. Sure, sure, sure. So, Jeff, uh, much appreciated uh, for your time and your insights, and and um, I'm just wondering, um, is there anything uh, that um, you'd like to tell us about um, that you're you know planning on doing for the rest of the year or in the near future? Well, um, well, oh, here's, um, here's, here's, oh, here's, here's, here's something. Oh, I have it right here. Um, I have a new book. I have a new book. Um, um, called, the art, called the art Business, Art World, Art, World, Market. art Market. It's out by Rutledge. It's a textbook of the art business. And, um, and um, it's particularly for anybody, particularly for anybody, particularly for anybody who really kind of wants to understand the art business and all of its complexity. I have, I have chapters, chapters on, all on all the different, the primary market, the secondary market, market auction houses, art fairs, but also these, but also very, these very technical questions of, questions of transportation, customs, cultural heritage compliance, and of course, connoisseurship or the question of you know attribution mm -hmm. so um wow that's um, that's what congratulations that's, that's so that i guess that would be the one thing i would tell you mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. what uh was did that involve a lot of research on your part or or how how did how'd you go about writing that a ton a it's ton like it's everything like I everything i ever did in the last 20 years mm -hmm. um all it's research, like all my all research my all my knowledge all my experience all my connections all my connections and stories, and stories i've heard, stories I've heard. so and yeah think, and, and i um, think this version um, this version um I, I was able I, to do, the, able to do the, the sourcing the, the way I wanted it, and so it has about, I think I have 20, yeah, I have about 20 pages of work cited, um, probably about 800 footnotes, um, so uh, yeah, a lot of sourcing, a lot of research, um, but I really wanted it to be kind of comprehensive. Excellent, excellent. 
Also curious, do you have any uh, parting thoughts regarding uh, artificial intelligence and uh, what that you know might mean for the art world or or uh, art? We're, we're looking sure, at it we for sure. Really we are definitely at looking um, at it. Um, we were talking, we were talking, we're talking, talking to people here in Vilnius, which is a real tech center, about, center about what we can do in that way. Um, especially especially what we're trying, what to, we're do trying is, to do, which is um, processing process information, data, especially pigments and processing information from these scientific instruments we're using. And so for our perspective, we definitely are looking at it as a company in New York Art Forensics um, and developing some projects in that way. Um, but that's, um, that's just our little niche of art forensics. Um, it's going to be, um, it's huge, going to be for huge for sure. We're just, sure. We're just exactly not sure exactly how it's going to be employed. Um, in the making, in of, the art making works, of artworks, um, um, I'm assuming it's, I'm assuming coming, it's coming. Um, um, that's a, kind, that's of a different kind of a different question, question but I would, say, I, would say, yeah, I would say, yeah, I would say to be prepared, prepared for, for, for that so. very much so. Mm -hmm. This is a silly uh, send off, but uh, would you have maybe three tips for someone who's, uh, you know, in the market to buy a masterwork? Um, um, yeah, one. Yeah, one. Uh, uh, don't look for a bargain. Don't look for a bargain. Two. Two. Um, um, don't assume you're. Don't smarter assume you're than smarter than, than everyone else. Three. Three. Don't. Don't. Go out, and, go, out, go, go out and go out and go out and buy a contemporary work by a living, artist, by a somebody living artist, somebody you know who's working, working in your area. area. Um, contemporary artists, contemporary artists, artists, artists need collectors, and their works are just as valuable, just as valuable right. in, in, aesthetic in, in aesthetic and moral sense. So by contemporary, by contemporary. <laughs> I just want to discourage you, but buy contemporary art. Sounds great. Sounds great, Jeff. Thanks so thanks so much for joining us on Making Waves. Yeah. Uh, thanks yeah, to everyone I mean, for tuning in, and, and sorry for the uh, little technical glitches. Hope the uh, echo wasn't too bad. A few people chimed in on, on that. Yeah. Dr. Jeff yeah. Taylor is just one of the spectacular individuals doing amazing things in a difficult, difficult world that I plan on continuing to interview on Making Waves. Stay tuned. I'm Drew Leifite, and uh, thanks so much again, Jeff. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Drew. Ciao.